Hello, let's look at how to web scrape right move and insert the results into a vector database and perform a semantic search. The reason for doing semantic search is because estate agents are not always <laughs> accurate with their description. I'll say that to be diplomatic. So what I've got here is 70 results. I've searched for Bath area in the UK, 20 mile radius, uh, between 250 and £300,000. It's found 70 results, believe it or not. I've told it not to show retirement homes, buying scheme, etc. So if we've told it to find detached, nor new home, buying schemes, retirement home. It's found 70 results. So in the previous video, I showed how to web scrape with, um, just close that. I'll just just fire that up again in a second. So if, let me just show you the web scraper if you haven't watched the previous video. That is what I copied and pasted from here. So you copy and paste that, put that into URL, and that's what requests will go and get. Problem being is that it would get everything. So I've told it to skip these words, these keywords. If any of those words are in the description, it will continue in the for loop see there um, don't worry too much about this code I've, I can put the link to the previous video for this particular code so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start up docker which will run quadrant quadrant vector database um, just go to quadrant.tech I'll put the link in the description get the quadrant database and I'll put a link to the semantic search tutorial as well so, um, I've already fired up Jupyter Notebook, so if we skip across to that and um, pip install sentence transformers, numpy pandas, tqdm, and gives you the progress bar. We're using the sentence transformer um, all mini lm l6v2, which um, is not the most up to date, but it does the job, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So let's do the imports, we'll set the model. Um, very important here. The way I've set the scraper to create the JSON file, it's actually just um, line after line after line of JSON. So there's no square bracket at the start or end, and there's no comma at the end of each line. Uh, it keeps things simpler in the long run, believe me. So get the head, um, if we've got uh, top five properties. Um, so here we do the encoding, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the title and the description, and we're going to iterate over all of them, and then we're going to turn those into vectors. Payload will actually be the actual text. Vector shape, we've got 25 results. So here you see we've got 25 results compared to original 70. So this is this is pretty amazing, really, because what we're doing is we're saving ourselves having to look at potentially uh, 45 properties, which um, we've got semi-detached in the video in the, in the uh, listing description. So I'm just going to save that, save the vectors. MP got saved. This is the syntax to start up the um, vector database. Still the quadrant client or 6333 local host. Now we recreate the collection. This is for testing, so it deletes the collection and creates a new one. If you're in production, you wouldn't want to be doing recreation. Let's run the code from uh, all cells. So I've broken something. Oh, socket create connection. Uh -huh. There's me doing a demo and it wasn't actually running. So let's just run that little bit again. So I will do here. Now because it's running, we can recreate the collection. And what we're doing is we're mapping um, file name file description path, um, with JSON loads and then it's actually creating the payload so that's the 
that's all of the JSON. And uh, we'll pick out the bits we want from the JSON once we've uh, found the correct results in the semantic search. So go in, vectors, payloads. Payload is just an object at this point in time. Do the upload, upload collection, including vectors and payload. IDs it can generate itself. The batch size is 256. That's how many vectors will be uploaded in a single. After that, you have to start batching them. This is the all of this is copied and pasted from quadrant.tech. There, um, so this is then your searcher. Basically, this uses the sentence transformer with the model and it um, creates vectors of your query and it looks for results which most closely match your query, which is what we want. Then it just uh, limits the results to five. So if we keep going. I just want to search for a property attached with a garage. And here we go. So that's detached. It's got a garage. Good. So bear in mind that we started off 70 properties. And these were the 70 it originally found. Um, very quickly, you can see that it, it was finding cottages, semi-detached, no sign of a garage on any of these. Um, that's a bungalow with no visible garage. That's the one it did. we found with the semantic search. So you can see it's pretty good. It's, it's finding the finding the detached properties. Right, let's look at the next result. Yep, house with a garage, this is good. Um, I think we know this is going to be pretty good in general. About a garage. That's obviously got a garage just there. Detached, yep. Final one, that is detached and it's got a garage, so that's pretty good. That's a lot more accurate than using right move itself. So if you're going to be doing something like this as a property developer or something, you could save yourself so much time. That's 70 adverts you would have had to scroll through and discard it. Um, admittedly, you can save your results and then you can do that little, little cross to so you don't have to see the results again, I believe. So next time you won't have to see it. But if you were searching on a new area, then um, particularly with the semantic search, it just goes cuts straight to the chase. So the top result, you want attached house with a garage, and that's exactly what you what it found you. So um, uh, let's put um, near a school. Let's try that. But often people want to find a house near a school. Uh, there we go, three bedroom detached house near to a primary school. That was, I know we've seen it already, but obviously, this is the uh, top result for a house with a garage which is near a school. Now we can see that's St. Michael's primary school. So the vector database contains the payload, so this is the payload. And it, it so it, it returns the payload, but it searches on the vectors. If that makes sense. Um, so yeah, just go to quadrant.tech, quadrant and you'll get pretty much most of what I've shown here. All I've really changed from what they would show would I've changed the, the name of my JSON file. I'm using CPU instead of GPU. Um, I'm picking out title and description. I don't, I think in their example, name and description or something. So bit in blue here, this matches the, the key that will be present in the JSON. So if we go to, I'm just going to stop that now. So you can see we've got title. And we've got uh, a bit truncated. So, yeah, so you've got title, 
description. And that's what we are coding. So we're encoding the title and the description. Because sometimes we were getting detached in the title, but not in the description, and vice versa. So to cover both bases, I was going to. Uh, I've chosen to make it include the title and description when it encodes it. So that should give us better results. We have 25. So there were 25 results in the JSON file, 25 lines, 384 vectors. The more vectors you have, I believe, the more accuracy you may get, depending on kind of the style of your data. 384 seems to work fine, and um guessing that's a bit quicker. And then MP save, so that's the vectors, that's based on their example, that's straight from their sample. Um, yeah, and pretty much everything else downwards is from, from the quadrant.tech example. Um, the neural searcher, that's just uh, two lines which, which actually use their class. Um, in the text, text equals and then in, in quotes what you what it is you're searching for. So um, that's the link there to to quadrant. That was the actual. Show you that. Create a simple neural search service. So most of this code is what I've just shown you, really. But I've just tweaked it to make it work with my file names. Didn't use CUDA. Yeah, that lines equals true, really important. Without that, you'll start getting um, lots of very large errors, especially if you're using Jupyter. Um, I can show you, I can prove that in fact. Uh, we didn't have lines equals true. We'd be in a world of hurt with some horrible errors and not easy to troubleshoot either. So if I run that, it runs fine there. It tries to encode. Uh, it's working because I think it's. There we go. It should get down to here. Ha! <sighs> Spot the deliberate mistake to um, let's fire up Docker again. Right, let's no Docker, no Docker's running. Let's run, let's run all cells. And lines equals true has reappeared. Right. Game. Getting bored. I'm, I do apologise. I'm just trying to show what happens if you didn't. Um, yeah, here we go. So if you didn't do lines equals true, you get this error, which is just horrible. Um, trailing value error trailing data. Remember that if you ever see value error trailing data. To go lines equals true. Run again. Happy days. We've got a working program and we've got results. So obviously, the other thing that they show in sorry about that show in the documentation is how to go right down to the how to deploy the search with fast api it's pip install fast api uvicorn you're not supposed to use uvicorn in production but uh just for testing that's fine then we've got the api endpoint api forward slash search pass in a string then that string makes its way to text equals q because q gets put into the search startup and eventually you will get your results via the API rather than well I did it in Jupyter Network but you can do it just in plain Python or 
HTML or JavaScript front end for it. So um, yeah, world's your oyster really. But um, yeah, Quadrant, very good. And obviously it's um, an alternative to using F-A-I-S-S, which I tried in the earlier video. I think it's two videos ago. I tried using that, but it wasn't over. It wasn't over accurate. So I actually prefer using, um, I'm just going to stop that now. I actually prefer using show you the file structure one last time now you've watched this it might make it a bit more sense. um what was the same prefer using yes yeah, so you might want to use fast api or you might even use flask even if um properties.json that's what we get from the app that's the output of scrape.py start of vectors it basically saves the uh, result of Adding into the vectors, it gets saved into the .mpy. Uh, yeah, quadrant storage, that's for persistence. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's for persistence. To be honest, when you're writing it and testing it, persistence isn't top of your priorities, but it, obviously it will need to be as you get closer to deploying to production or whatever. Um, yeah, and that's the, that's the notebook. It is a lot easier to develop this in Jupyter Notebook. Yeah, especially with the TQDM progress bar. And so the one problem is the errors, like the lines equals true. That's pretty horrible to debug. But with pandas, uh, the data frames do make it a lot easier to work with, uh, especially when you're messing around with JSON and trying to see what you're dealing with. Um, for instance, I had that, um, I think it was a payload, which was the object, which is the map things like that so yeah thanks for watching back soon